in the Lord's house. Amen. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day, this is the day that the Lord house let's lift our hands and begin to worship the Lord in this place father we bless you tonight God we thank you Lord we glorify your name Lord we worship you in your house tonight God welcome Holy Spirit in this place to have your will and have your way in Jesus name great and mighty is the Lord our God great and mighty is he and Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Sing church. Oh, great. Praises to our King. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Oh, lift up your banner. Praises to our King. Oh, great and mighty. Oh, I got to sing that again. Amen. Oh, great and mighty is He. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty. Oh, yes, you are, Lord. Oh, lift up your banner. Praises to our King. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. One more time. Great and mighty is He. Oh, great and mighty. Come on, lift your hands. Wave at the Lord. Tell Him, great and mighty is He. Amen. Oh, great and mighty. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty. Praises to our King. Oh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Come on, praise Him tonight, church. Father, we love you tonight. Lord, we praise you in this house tonight. Amen. Father, we bless you. 
Father, we praise you tonight, God. Would you just begin to worship him tonight? Just begin to bless his name. Lord, we worship you tonight, God. We honor you, Lord. Father, we're so thankful to be back in the house of the Lord tonight to give honor and glory to your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. Oh, let's just sing this song. Let us praise the Lord. Amen. Sing, church. Let's just praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands for heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. I said, praise amen you might be seated amen if y'all don't sit down i'm gonna get started amen we're gonna go to the lord in prayer let me see the, that bulletin right quick brother just in case i've missed something there y'all can be praise team y'all can sit down too amen give y'all a break amen how many of you glad to be back in the lord's house tonight amen I, we missed y'all sunday we took a whole crowd with us to tennessee and god god brother we celebrate with brother zach and april as they graduated from their MIP and, and had the hands laid on them and the general overseer was there and preached a tremendous message and we just, we had a time, there was about six or 800 people in that church that night and we praised and shouted and worshiped and just had a time. It was, I tell you, our, our, the church of God is in good hands, amen. We, we got some good folks coming up, amen. We're thankful for that. But we're glad to be back home. I said, I got to hurry and get back home for y'all fire me, amen. So I'm back and, and hopefully it won't go nowhere else, amen. Good to be back with you. We miss you. Uh, of course, it wasn't on the uh, live stream, so we weren't able to um, uh, peek in on the services, but we understand that brother Brother uh, Mills and Sister Jamil did a tremendous job. I knew they would. They always do, and we appreciate them uh, so much also. So let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Camp meeting is around the schedule. Let's remember that, and I think that's, oh, prayer. The prayer breakfast. Brother Scott, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but Brother Tool is going to be bringing our devotion. There it is, and it's June the 3rd at 9 a.m., and it's for men and women, and we just invite you to come out. I think you're going to be blessed, and so that's that's uh, June the 3rd at 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall, and breakfast will be served. I tell you, you get the Word of God. Oh, well, we, please sign up. Well, don't. Good luck with that, brother. And I don't believe in luck, but I've been this, with this bunch for almost for six years. They won't sign up for nothing, but they'll show up. Amen. 
So was that a ringing endorsement to sign up? If Yes, yeah, sign up. All right. So please sign up. We're going to have breakfast and a great time with the Lord. So anyway, remember, please remember that. And I think that's everything. I, I don't start about being so scattered, but we're just, you know, getting back in, hadn't been home long and trying to get back on back in the saddle again. want to go to the Lord in prayer. And first, we want to offer our condolences, uh, Sister Karen and her family, for her brother, uh, Billy Boyd, passing up at Duke Hospital. We, we're so sorry, Sister. And I believe you said the viewing is, uh, help me out here, Friday Saturday and the funeral is all hillside. The viewing at one, a memorial. At two. So visitation at hillside from one to two, and then the memorial service will take place at two o'clock. So let's be praying for uh for uh, a brother Boyd's, a um, brother Billy's wife, uh, and that family, and Sister Karen it has been quite a journey. And uh, he uh, he's he told me uh, at Greenville Hospital more than once he wanted to live, but he knew where he was going when he left this world. I'm gonna tell you, it's great to know your name is in that Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Uh, there there's life beyond. Listen, people, there's life beyond this. There's a place to go. There's a home been prepared for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm redeemed and on my way to heaven. Somebody help me and say amen. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. Remember that. Does anybody have any outspoken? I want us to remember Shirley Berry. Continue to remember her. Also, I want to continue to remember Zach Martin in his, in his battle. Continue to remember Brother Kenny. He's up in, the security, up in the sound room, and he's working security tonight, but we miss him up here, and I want to continue to pray for him. Somebody else, Sister Right, right. Brother Milton, thank you, Sister Elizabeth. Brother Milton, Sister Jeannie was sick last this past Sunday. That's why she won't hear. And Brother Milton is now under the weather, too. So we miss them and uh, want to remember them also in prayer. Anybody else tonight? Sister Judy in the back. Brother Jonathan's wife, Lynn. Let's remember Lynn. Sister. Let's remember Sister Nellie. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Uplifted hands. Y'all remember my lost loved ones. I want to see them saved. The Lord's, this thing's going to wrap up one day, church. I don't know if it's tomorrow. Could be today. Could be 50 years, 100 years. I don't know, but he's coming back. Amen. And want to be ready. Amen. Amen. Good to have everybody. Brother Shannon, were you just raising your hand or did you have a request? Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, would you stand? We're going to pray, and as soon as we do, we're going to lift the offering. I'm going to ask you after you get done praying, just bring your offering up. I, I think I'm about ready to get the offering bags out and start handing them out again. It's about time to get back to, to, to normal again, I guess. But would you join me? Would you lift your voice? Pray out loud and let the Lord hear your voice. I know he can read the intents of your heart, but just lift your voice and pray out loud with me tonight. Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we're just so humbled and so thankful, God, for an opportunity to pray, to lift up the name of Jesus, to magnify the God of heaven. Lord, to thank you for salvation. Thank you for separation and sanctification. Thank you for the baptism in the spirit. Thank you for the healing in our body, the healing of our soul and spirit, God. And Lord, for every need that has been lifted up tonight, we ask you to move. We ask you to come down and touch, Lord God, knowing, God, that you are more than able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can even ask or thank. God, as I looked around a while ago, every hand was raised almost in this building, signifying a need. So look, Lord, look down to it, Lord, and minister to those that need healing in their body, Lord, those that need a touch in their mind, those that need encouraging or strengthening or build up, Lord, in, in the things of God. We, we just pray tonight, God, for our young people in the back and how that we, we're watching uh, uh, those uh, the young people grow in the Lord, not only spiritually, but uh, more children are coming, and we thank you for that, Lord, and that you would count us worthy, Lord God, to shepherd that next generation. So, Lord, take this service and all that is accomplished, and Lord, let it bring glory and praise and honor to you, and the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. Just play that again. Would you come on and let's lift the offering tonight. I'm learning to lean. Y'all help me sing. Oh, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Oh, I'm finding more power than I ever dreamed. Oh, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. 
sing it with us, church. Amen. Let's worship. Oh, I'm learning to live. Oh, yes, I'm learning. I'm growing in the Lord, church. Oh, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. I need your power, God. Oh, I'm finding more power than I ever dreamed. Oh, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Would you stand and help me sing it? Come on. Oh, I'm learning to lean. Come on, church. Oh, I'm learning. Oh, everybody need that power. Amen. I'm learning to lean. Oh, on Jesus. Oh, I need your power, God. I'm finding more power. Sing it one more time, church. Oh, now I'm learning. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, tonight. Oh, I'm learning to lean. Oh, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Oh, I'm Father, we come to you now as we prepare to break bread. We ask you, God, open our understanding. Look down to us tonight, God. Look down to us. Father, help me, Lord. Help me, God. Hide me, Lord, behind the finished work of the cross of Calvary. God, that we pray, Lord, as we enter into a battle tonight, amen, knowing that there's an enemy to our soul that comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But Lord, I'm thanking you tonight, God, that he is as a roaring lion. But the Bible says that you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. And Lord, I'm so glad that greater is he that's within me than he that's in this world. So Lord, we'll take this word tonight as we break bread, God. Let it be heard, let it be applied, let it be moved upon, God. We'll give you praise for all that is being done. Oh, I'm finding more power oh, than I have ever dreamed. Oh, I'm learning to live on Jesus. Amen. Thank all of y'all. Y'all can be seated tonight. Amen. Amen. We're growing, Church of God. Amen. We're growing. We want to grow in the grace and the knowledge. Let's go, uh, Brother Craig. If we, let's go to Second Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. We're t we're still in our equipping of the saints, and I want to say a, a, a just a thank you to everybody that helped uh, push things through Sunday. Why well, I tell you, when, it's one thing when I'm gone, but when Craig is gone, it's trouble because everything will fall apart if we don't keep things going. Craig didn't know he was that important, but we're just letting him know. Amen. And we we appreciate all the work. We appreciate the Mills family. I uh, appreciate Sister Elizabeth filling in. Uh, Brother Zach, a uh, week or so ago when I've been out preaching revivals and different things. And we're just, we're blessed with the ministry team that we have here and that God has certainly uh, uh, blessed us. In a, in a mighty, in a mighty way. Let's go ahead and get into the word of the Lord and may we hear and obey the scriptures tonight. Amen. The word of God says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to him be glory now, both now and forever. And everybody said, amen. So we're talking about, now if you'll, Brother Craig, if you'll run over to chapter, I mean, verse chapter four of the Ephesians, our text that we're bouncing off of and jumping out of. I want to stay in my lane biblically. I want to have a proper uh, exegesis of the word. And I want to make sure that we don't, uh, we don't vary from what the original meaning of these scriptures are. And I don't put my commentary in there uh, or, or my thoughts of what it is. 
is, but the Bible speaks about the, the, the saints of God, the perfecting or the maturing of the saints. Remember, I just read 2 Peter 3 and 18, but God said, but Peter said, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I want you to hear me right now what I'm going to say. God ain't asking. God ain't asking. It's not a suggestion. It is a command. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing that can stop you from growing in the Lord and maturing except you. I know the devil will fight you. I understand. I, I know that there are trials and tribulations. I know that there are things that, that call, life gets in the way sometimes. But really, when it's all said and done, the, what's keeping you from growing in the Lord when you go by the mirror, look in there, and that's, that's who it is. It's the same thing for me. If I'm going to grow, it's up to me. If I'm going to push forward, it's up to me because the Word of God is clear that those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. There, the Bible is replete. If you keep pressing in, close, he said, if you'll draw nigh to me, he said, he, he said, if you'll draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. I don't know about you, amen. I love bringing mama in for a hug and tell her I love her. I love bringing baby girl in. And I, I and I can't get a hold of them boys like that no more. But I, when they were little, I loved bringing them in for a hug. But there's nothing like getting in the presence of God and feeling his presence. Come on to say amen. So the Lord is not asking. The Lord is not suggesting. The Lord is commanding. The word of God is that you and I press on into perfection or into maturity. That word in the English language, we're not saying you're going to be perfect. We know that we're not perfect. But he's saying that you press on in into growing in the Lord. And don't stunt. Don't get stunted in your growth. Don't let anything get between you and growing and being stronger in the Lord. Uh, uh, the Bible said to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen, amen. Now, we're going to look at equipping the saints. We're going to look at the reaping and sowing. We'll go to Galatians chapter 5. Matter of fact, go ahead and slip over there. And now you say, Brother Bateman, you're, you're, you're taking this out of context. No, what I want to just do here is to look at the principle of sowing and reaping. Reaping and sowing and how it applies to growing. And let me, let me help you something. Don't ever, and I do this, so I'm preaching to myself before I hit you with it. Don't ever complain about a service being dry or being dead. I don't, God whooped me over that one time. God said, don't ever call my house dead because wherever the Lord is, there's light. And I was, I meant, I was meaning it was just dry and it won't, but it, it but my point is don't, don't dare do that myself. I'm the first one to admit that. Uh, you know, I, I've gone home, you know, since I've been your pastor, probably within the last month and say, well, what's wrong with them people? Why ain't folks worshiping? Come on here. Why ain't y'all y'all better help me tonight? I mean, you know, I ain't y'all ain't seen me in a week or two and I'm ready to preach. But you get in, you get out of it what you put in it. If you're willing and if we'll make up our minds, a reaping and so I'm going to sow into this service. I'm not trying to manipulate. I'm not trying to get you to do something that you don't do, don't feel like doing. That's not my intent. But it, it, it's in growing in the Lord. If you're going to grow, it's going to be what you put into it. If, if, you know, if you take a, a newborn baby and you never feed that child, that child's going to die. And if you as a, as a newborn Christian, if you don't grow on the milk and then get to the point where you're ready for the meat, when you get ready for the meat and you're still on the milk, you're going to be a baby Christian. You're going to be the one that's so easily offended going to be the one, the first one to complain. You're going to be the first one to find fault. Come on here and help me out. And, and, and so, so what we do is we want to use this principle, the sowing and the reaping, and we want to say, you know what, if I'm going to play an instrument, and I wish I could, I wish I could play like Jimmy Swagger, y'all would never hush me up. But I can't, and so that's the end of that. But if I'm going to preach, I want to preach to the best of the ability, what, to what extent it is, amen. If I'm going to sing up here in the choir of the praise team, if I'm going to be a worshiper, amen, you, you want them to do better, you do better. Put something in it. 
You want, you know, these Sunday school teachers, it, it, we thank God for the teachers and those that, that are in, a, in authority, in the positions in, in our church. They have to put time and effort and energy in. These people that have taught Sunday school here for decades did not get to where they are by hoping some that they would learn somebody would drop it on their head it was hours of studying when you hear Lois Sauls or Elizabeth Forns or, 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 or Ann Harris or I'm going to forget somebody Sister Patricia I, oh Lord help me out Brother Larry yeah I, I, well, I was going to forget him anyway amen but when you hear these people you're hearing decades of diligent study of the word of God pouring in spending time sacrificing of their lives pouring into the word of God uh, and getting fed in the word of God as they come and deliver the word of God to us it takes a cost and so if you're going to grow if you want if you want these services and you want uh you want uh, the Lord to move then put something into it when you come pray over the service that's a novel suggestion tonight. How many of us? No, don't raise your hand. How many of us have really prayed to God? We got to feel. We got to. We've got to experience you in this building tonight. It's Wednesday night. It doesn't matter to God. He's the same God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Y'all know the days of the week. He's still God. He's God in revival. He's God on Wednesday night. Amen. So we were having revival with Adam, brother Adam, and uh, sister. Good, so Sylvia's not here tonight. I'll get her. She'll get me later. But uh, I don't know. We, 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 brother, we, were, we were worshiping the Lord, and I looked up. there, And, you know, so Sylvia's been hurting lately. She's hurting in her back. She's having some issues. And, and pray for her, and we, we are, and I want you to remember in prayer. And, she, you know, she don't like to miss church. She didn't stay home tonight to punish herself. She wanted to be here. And I've looked in that that. that Holy service on revival night, and I look down. There comes Sister Sylvia dancing, floating down the aisle. Never seen nobody float like she does, floating down that aisle. And I'm thinking to myself, that woman, that woman up in age, hurting in the back. Amen. She got out of it what she put in it. Amen. Come on, hear somebody say, Amen. I'm telling you right now, we're a Pentecostal church. We're Pentecostal people. Let's act like it. Amen. Let's be. We say we are. Come on and say amen, amen. All right, let's go, let's go. So we get in, we get out what we put in. So I, I just use that as an illustration about the service. But I want to apply it to growing spiritually. If you're going to grow, if you obey the commands, the imperatives of God, and if you're going to grow, you've got to put something in. You've got to put your time in. You've got to put some effort in. There's got to be some blood, sweat, tears and equity in this thing. You are not going to grow by osmosis. You're not going to grow in the Lord. If your wife is studying and praying and seeking the face of God and reading the word and memorizing scriptures and working in the kingdom and growing by leaps and bounds, the husband's not going to grow just because she is or vice versa or children so forth and so on. You've got to do this yourself. We've got to make up our mind. I'm going to get closer to God than I've ever been. I want to get closer to God than I've ever been. I want to grow. I want to see. I want to uh, see the Word of God uh, opened up to me like I've never seen it before. Amen. Come on, church. And if you put that into it, you'll get something out of it. See, we're not talking about... Now, I, I've not checked, and not that I've got a whole lot anyway, but, you know, if you've got money in stocks and accounts and retirement accounts ever since our beloved president took over and whenever he did the stock market has tanked so you can keep putting in and it keeps coming out that's the way the economy works you stock market they say if you're going to make any money and I don't know anything about all this they say if you're going to make any money in the stock market you got to be in it for the long haul because there's ups and there's downs. And they say you really got to you really got to look at a 10-year window to kind of see where, where things are going. But see, that's based on a man's system. I'm telling you, if you invest in God's system, if you invest in 
God's in economy, there, there will be a, re, a return. Remember last week, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. I don't know about you, but I want to see a, I want to be fruitful to 100 fold, amen? I guarantee if you put your money into a, a, some kind of a, an account where you're trying to make money off of it, and I ask you, well, what do you want? You want a 30% return, a 60% return, or a 100% return? Well, duh. Doggone right, 100%. Come on in here. So tonight, in, in, in growing, we grow through our, we put in our worship we, in, in the way we work in the Lord, and we can grow in, in, in our relationships with other people. If I want to grow in my relationship with you, okay, then I have to, there, somebody's got to put something in this thing. Come on, amen. You know, I know they're they're gone, but uh, brother and sister told her that used to sit over here. I used to visit. I love to go to the house and visit them. Sweetest people I think's ever walked the face of the earth. Every time I go, she said he ain't never called me by my name. She said he's always called me sweetie or honey or something like that. And they'd sit there together the whole time I'm there holding hands. Boy, I'd go home, I'd say, baby, come in, let me hold your hand. You know, and you see a lifetime of pouring into one another, investing into one another. I, I you know, if they took, I don't think, I, I don't think they've, I don't know if they've ever fought. I'm sure maybe they, I don't know. They're gone, they're in heaven. But they had a relationship that they ought to be the ones that taught a marriage class. And because when you can see there's an investment of time, effort, energy, and love and pouring out of oneself. If you want a relationship to grow, you've got to put some time in it. I've built relationships with people, like, and I hope, hope I'm building relationships with y'all now. That's, that's, that's my goal. Bobby, I, I, know you, I hope you don't mind. It's too late. You're a lot bigger than I am, but you, I know you can whoop me. Bob, I've known him since he was a teenager. And him and I, I remember Bobby used to witness to me when I was out in the world. I said, man, get, I want to get away from him. He was, I knew he'd beat me up if I'd say something ugly, so I did. But those relations, and Bobby and I have been, we, we have remained close, haven't we, Bobby? We're remained, you better say yes. I mean, I was in trouble. <laughs> Bobby and I, and, and, and even though we hadn't seen each other for years, when we, when, we, when we walk in the door and we sit down at a table together or a restaurant together, we are, we, are, we are transformed right back to the right where we dropped off. Anybody got friends like that? You know what I mean? You're just, because there's been an investment over the years in building that relationship. I, I, have, a, I have a dear friend of mine. He was my clerk at Man's Harbor. He still visits me today and comes and spends the night. Now, is Kim, Kim, oh, Kim's here now, sorry. Every time he comes, Kim said, not again. Twitter, his name, oh, I shouldn't have said his name, oh, edit, I love him, he knows I give him a hard time, but you know, we, we purposely build a relationship, and even when I left, we, we, we stayed connected, and we, we spent time, we fished together, and he would come and stay at the house, everywhere I've moved, he'd come and spent the night and stay with him. I go down there, he lives in Man's Harbor, and I go and spend the night with him and his family, I'm close to his family, uh, I was there at the weddings, and the funerals of the moms and that. You know why? Because it's an investment of time. It would be easy for me to say, call, pick up the phone and call. I want y'all to help me now. I could pick up the phone. I'm sorry to hear that your mama died. You know what I did? I didn't do that. I did call, but I got in the car and I drove to Edenton and went to the funeral. Because I'm going to invest the time and the effort and the energy in something that is important. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Hang on here. And, 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 so, and so when doing that, in, in doing that, I've created these relationships that have been beneficial and been a blessing to me and helped me along my life. But those are natural relationships. So now I, let's jump it up to a supernatural relationship. When you make a connection with God and you put the time, the effort, the energy, the blood, sweat, and tears equity into a relationship with God, you will begin to see a, a manifestation of spiritual growth that will blow your mind. But most are not willing to put the time, effort, or energy in 
to getting close to God. And I'm telling you tonight, as your pastor, as your shepherd, as your watchman on the wall, rough times are on the way. Things are going, not, things are going to get worse. Our nation, I, I, I say this a lot, and, and the pulpit, and the reason why I do this, because I heard a Puritan preacher from the 1700s say this, the pulpits are the conscience of the nation. If we don't declare, and I've got a message I'm working on on sin. I don't know if I'm going to preach it Sunday morning or Sunday. I don't know yet. But I'm telling you right now, it, the, these, the word of God has to be proclaimed. There has to be a, a, a fidelity, an allegiance, a loyalty to preaching the unvarnished gospel so it'll go out. Amen. And I'm telling you tonight, amen, I want to get so close to God that I can hear. I want to be like the men of Issachar who understood the season. Look that up when you get home. Google it. It won't be hard to find. I ain't going to do all your work for it. Called the men of Issachar. They understood the time. You got to get close to God to hear what God is saying to the nation and to his people and to his church in this last day. Amen. God's not asking us. God is not suggesting or, or, or nudging us. God said to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I would say you have to be intentional. You have to be purposeful in your relationship with God. I'm telling you, saints of God, this will transform our lives. You say, well, Brother Bateman, I've arrived. Well, you're deceived. None of us have. Not a single one of us. We're all growing. We can all learn something. I, I love to use the illustration. I don't know who I got it from, but I, I didn't come up with it myself. But it said like the Bible is like an onion. You peel off one layer and there's another. And then you peel off another one. I still am amazed that when I, when I even when I'm doing sermon preparation, and you, you know when, when you preach three times a week, uh, and you have to come up with a lot of ideas, and, and you're studying, you're looking for inspiration, for, whether it's from a song or it's from something I read, or devotional commentary, or in my own personal reading uh, of the Word of God. It, it and, and I was like. Well, God, I've never seen that before. Well, you won't see it, and I won't see it if I'm not intentional and purposeful in digging into the Word of God. God wants to speak to everybody here, and I hope he'll use me tonight to speak to you. So here, let's move on. We have to grow. Help us, God, grow, and we have to press in for more. If you want more of God, you've got to press in. You've got to want it. You've got to really, really want it. And I'm asking God tonight, create in us this hunger. Create in us. You say, well can, well, can God do that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Bible says to train up a child, Proverbs 22. It says to train up in a child, and when he is old, in the Lord, and when he's old, he'll not depart. That, in that literal Hebrew, it means to help, to have a cocoon in your home uh, with your children or grandchildren, and within that home, nurture an environment that creates a hunger for God. In other words, it's not just training like military training or job training. It is creating an environment that will create a hunger for the things of God. Man, we, you know, and I'm, our family is not perfect. I, I don't claim to be perfect. I'm far from it. But I, we, we, we have a, 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 a we have a culture or a celebration, if you will, in our home. And we're not ashamed to praise the Lord in our home, in our family altar. We're not ashamed to put on praise and worship music in the house, on the big screen, and begin to worship the Lord. We're creating a... Well, I heard this, I've heard this recently, and I don't know... I've never used this terminology, but creating a divine space. Creating a place and saying, when we come here, God, this is your time that we're giving of ourselves to you. I didn't come to Wednesday night to check it off the list. I came tonight to experience God. I came tonight to touch God. I came tonight to learn something that maybe that I didn't know. I come tonight, amen, to grow in my relationship with the, with the Lord. So maybe I'm creating this space and this time, you know, uh, uh, some of us in here, and I won't name no names, but some of us like to fish. 
and we create space in our calendar to go fishing. We create time to, and I, I'm, I'm just on myself, but you fishermen know what I'm talking about. We prepare our bait and our tackle and we prepare our lunch and our snacks and our, our drinks and we make sure we have ice and, 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 and on and on and, and, and there's a preparation in, in that. We're creating that space to get to the point that we're on the water at the place we want to be and with the hope and the expectation that there'll be a benefit or there'll be fish there that we can catch. How much more should the people of God create a space and say, God, I'm preparing my heart I'm preparing my mind with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, and all my spirit to seek you. God, I've got to experience you. God, I've got to be in your presence. God, I've got to feel your touch. Somebody lift your hand and help me say amen. God expects us to live a life of faith and become a mature person. I don't want to be. and I have so many old tired stories, and I know you're tired. I'm tired of them. I, I, I preached a homecoming at my first church. I went back years and years later. And I don't remember the exact detail. I've told the story before. I'm, I'm just so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. But the guy basically said, well, well you're, you're a lot better preacher now than you were then. And, it, you know, and it, at first it offended me. It, uh, no, I don't say it offended me. First it hurt my feelings a little bit. Then I realized, hey, man, I've been gone 10 or 15 years. I hope, I hope. I still got the first sermon that I ever preached on videotape, and I will never show. I, I Sister Elizabeth, I preached all I, all I knew in about 20 minutes. And the name of it was, if you ain't sanctified, you're going to hell. That's what it was. And I know I still ain't much of a preacher yet, but thank God I've grown some, amen. God expects us to grow and to live a life of faith and to move forward in the things of God. We're a great time. Let me, let me move on here. So I, I want to borrow a, a, a couple of quotes here. And I, one of them I know where it come from. The other one I don't. But it, they, they really struck me. And whether they're from I, one of them, I'll share who it is. Let me say the first one. Growth. I'm quoting, is a lifelong journey that begins with a change in your mindset. Boy, and I thought to myself, now, brother, you preaching, whoever, sister, whoever wrote that, that's your brother, in a mindset. My mindset is that I don't have to stay the same way that I am. I serve a God that says the outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed day by day said I press toward that mark I, I, there, is, there, is a, there is a place yet in the spirit realm there is a place in, in, in my own personal walk that yet I've not attained to and I'm going to keep pressing because you know, the closer I get to the Lord the, the better it is and when I find myself backing up or standing still and not moving and I, th that's not a good place to be so it begins, change is a lifelong journey that begins with a change in your mindset. I love this. It starts from within you, and then it moves outward through life experiences. Brothers and sisters, look around you. There are people in here who've been in the faith for decades, pressing, plowing, digging, praying, being faithful to the things of God. They did not get this way by coasting. They did not become these mature saints in God by putting it on cruise control. Everywhere I've pastored, I've had a percentage of the church, everywhere, some large percentages, some small, but everywhere there's always that group in there. They are pressing on. They're fired up. They love God. They love the Word of God. And that's what God wants us to be. God help me tonight. Come on and say amen. Now, John Maxwell, is a, is a, is, is he, he is a minister. I'm not sure who it was with. But he is a leadership guru and a great bestseller, and I just borrowed this quote from him, and I love it, and I, I'm, I, it, this will preach. Growth is the great separator between those who succeed 
and those who do not. Now, I'm sure he was talking about that in a business or a corporate environment. But in a spiritual application, it's not in the sense if you're saved, you're saved, you're going to go to heaven. If you're, if you're a Christian. But if you're one of them that is truly going to go further and do great things and see great exploits for God, growth is what's going to separate you from those that sit back and wish that, I'm, that, that I could do something. Wish that I, what stops us, and I said it earlier, is standing in the mirror looking back at us. Attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. Grow. You say, Brother Bateman, I'm too old to learn now. You, no, you ain't. The old saying is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You don't feed him. Yes, you can. You go about two days and don't feed him and then drag a biscuit out and he'll roll over. Growth is a great separator between those who succeed and those who don't. I want to close with Colossians. It's a powerful scripture. I'm not going to go to Galatians. I, I was going to stay there, but it, it's the sowing and reaping process or principle, not a process. of so What you sow is what you reap. If you're slowful, you're lazy, you're lackadaisical, you're apathetic, I love saying the word apathetic. It means you care but not enough to do anything about it. God help us. If I'm in a, if I'm in a rut in a bad place, God, I hope I got enough get up and go and gumption to want to do something about it. I want to be like, I want to be like Samson, if you will. And then Samson's not a really good illustration, except it, it did end well as far as his, I believe, his eternal uh, destiny. But the Bible said he would shake himself in the spirit of the Lord would come upon him. And then, of course, we know that then he dallied with the devil and Delilah and found himself with the Spirit of the Lord. He shook himself then, and the Spirit was gone. But the Lord is looking for men and women that are hungry and that are not satisfied with the status quo. Let me tell you, there's a shaking coming to America. There's a, a, a shaking. There's a, there is a, if, if this nation does it somehow reverse itself, and I don't know if we're too far gone. A lot of men that I listen to that I have a lot of respect for say we are. I hope not. Well, just when you think that it can't get any crazier, it does. And I'm telling you, those that have not built their house upon a rock are not going to stand. I'll close with these scriptures. Paul here is a prayer for the church at Coloss. And I love this whole prayer, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. I, just, I want to close this as my closing prayer for all of us. That you hear me, you want to grow, you want to move forward. And you, you, may, you may be here tonight and say, Brother Bateman, I really don't know. I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't know how. Let's, let's get together. Let's talk about it. Because I, I, I would love for everybody to, to really just grab a hold of this that attends our church and say, you know what? We're going forward. But I realize that's not going to happen. I hope it does. If I can just get a handful. If I can just get a handful. John Wesley said if I could get, I think he said seven, maybe ten, seven men who knew nothing but Christ and him crucified. He said, I'd turn England upside down. So my prayer in closing for you is this, that you might walk worthy of the Lord. Now watch these words, unto all pleasing. Anybody remember that old hymn? I want my Lord to be satisfied with me. Woo! I'm going to have camp meet by myself on Wednesday night. He said, I won't. He said, I'm praying that you walk worthy, worthy unto the Lord of the Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful. 
I want to be fruitful. In every good work. Listen to me, people. Ministry is work. Somebody's going to do it. Then he said, fruitful in every good work. Now watch this. And increasing. I love these words. Worthy, pleasing, fruitful, good work. Increasing what? In the knowledge of God. That's what Paul's praying for the church. That's my prayer for us tonight. I'm including myself. Verse 11. Strengthen. Did you just get all the rest? Go back, go back real quick, Craig. I, we, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. Paul saying, I'm praying that you walk worthy. You're pleasing. You're being fruitful in every good work. You're increasing in the knowledge of God. Go to verse 11. Strengthened with all might. You know what this word might means in the Greek? Miraculous, supernatural power. He said, I want you to be strengthened with all this miraculous power. I want us to be like Elisha when, when Elijah had been taken up in the whirlwind and he struck the banks of the river Jordan and said, where is the God of Elijah? And I want us to say, amen, where is the God of the house here of Alley Good Church of God? We're 100 years old, people of God. The same God that started this movement is the same God that's here. The same God that moved in every revival is the same God that's here. So with all might, according to his glorious power, now here we go, until all patience, to long suffering, you're going to have to endure. Woo! That's all right. I, 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 my, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, this too shall pass. And with joyfulness, verse 12, and I'm closing. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us. You know what this word meat means? I, you know, uh, in the Greek, not meat like I met you. Or we can go meet somebody. This, this word means to be qualified. Paul said, I'm, I'm praying that you'll be qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. I want you to stand. God qualifies. I want you to put your best foot forward. I want every head bowed and every eye closed.